Hey guys, Chris, Ironhead Garage. Well, we're back to working on the old GMC some more. Last time uh, you seen me do that steering column, and I got that uh, Tri 5 Chevy column clamp on there. Got it all bolted up. My bolts are a little bit long. Even these, I got some half inch ones, and I'll shorten these up. But uh, I got a mark on my steering column right there an inch from the clamp so i got this bearing here that's going to fit up inside there and then i'll drill a couple holes in it and weld some nuts on and have some uh, bolts that set it keep it from uh, sliding out of there so i got this collar here it's a split collar three quarter so this will go over the shaft and lock against that bearing but if I just put it like that it rubs the inside of the race and it rubs the outside of the race so what I came up with is this washer right here see how it's tapered on one side so that'll go right to that race that inner race you can see so it'll only spin that outer race and it won't hit that dust cap either and mess that uh, dust cap up and then I'll I'll put this uh, three-quarter clamp on there so it'll be like so so it's gonna work pretty good first I'm gonna pull this shaft up through the top of that steering wheel and clamp it with some vice grips and then I'm gonna cut this uh, housing here this steering column housing and see if this bearing fits up in there I believe it will and then I'll slide that shaft back down and then measure it and uh, make a mark and then cut that shaft and then pull that shaft out of there and then uh, make that double D on there for a steering knuckle. So I'm going to get busy on that. Always got these drags going. You got the rails on now. Right on. All right, I'll be back. All right, just wanted to bring you back for a second and uh, show you how I'm going to cut this nice and square. So I just put a piece of masking tape around there and made it meet in the middle and uh, just follow that line. That's one way to cut a, a piece of pipe square. Another good idea is if you got a big pipe cutter, you can go around it and you can make a mark at least and then uh, cut that mark. But that's the way I'm going to do it. Got the Sawzall with the long blade. Don't hit them wires. All right, I'm gonna cut her off. Well, I got it chopped off, and you can see, pretty darn square. So I'm gonna clean it up with a file and uh, get her nice and smooth. Okay, I got the rod sticking through. I got a mark on it there. You can see, so that'll be outside of bearing. And, uh, my clamp and my washer's 5 8 and this is that Chinese one again but uh, this distance from here to here is 7 8 I checked it on my Borgson ones on my 55 so from that mark there I'm gonna come down an inch and a half because 5 8 and uh, 7 8 is inch and a half and then I'll cut it and then I'll come back up 7 8 and then I'll I'll make a double D shaft so where I put my wheel up here on my steering column if you just uh, put it tight down there it'll be rubbing on the column housing the back of the steering wheel so I got an eighth inch spacer in there because uh, when you actually put this wheel on there's a spring in there and it will uh, spring it away from the column so it don't rub so I might take a sixteenth off of an inch off of uh, this measurement to give me a sixteenth of an inch off of that steering column housing in there because you don't want it uh, to pull back and forth you don't want this to push down because it could bind the u-joint so probably only a sixteenth uh, shim up there so I'm going to pull this shaft out. I can pull it out now 
up in the cab because it's shorter. So I'm going to pull this out and cut it and uh, put that double D on it. See how it comes out. Hey guys, another little trick for you. Bearing didn't want to go on here, but I knew it was the same size. It's pretty tight tolerances, but uh, put a little bit of oil on there because it ain't going to slide on there without no oil. It'll just stick. Look at that. It's nice and tight. So I got to cut for the right length. Um, I'm going to go 7 eighths in and then make that double D and test it with my, uh, my Chinese knuckle. I still got to fit this bearing into that column there. But uh, I'm going to work on that. I'm getting it. All right, guys. Get a little bit of oil. Does wonders. All right, well, I got that uh, double D cut on the steering shaft. Here's one of my uh, my Chinese U-joints, but it's a, it's a double D. Fits on there nice, nice and tight. Probably uh, tighter than the than a double D shaft you can buy. I got a raw steel one to use, or I got a chrome one. I'm not sure if the chrome one's long enough, but uh, one more part done. See if I can get that bearing in that column now. Well, I got the bearing uh, into the steering column housing. Fits in there nicely. I drilled a couple holes in it on either side. And I got these uh, Allen head set screws to hold that bearing in there. So I'm going to weld those nuts on there and then uh, take this bearing and then make a couple little indents in it for those uh, Allen head set screws to set so the bearing can't fall out or go up the shaft so we're gonna get welding these little nuts on there hopefully I don't burn the hell out of this steering column <laughs> all right guys all right well I got those nuts welded on the steering column got the allen head set screws in there I took my uh, my burr bit and uh, burned a couple little uh, divots into that bearing so those uh, Allen set screws to go in there. Got my spacer in there. Got my collar on there. I got my wheel mocked up and I got a little less than an eighth between the steering wheel and the column so it don't hit and drag. Look at that, she spins pretty smooth. Oh yeah, gotta love it. So the U-joint fits right on there, or steering knuckle. Always call me U-joint. But those got a little bit of a gap there, and then I'll uh, I'll mark that when I get my Borgson knuckles. I'll mark that inside, and then I'll drill it. So the Allen set screws set in there, but I don't want to lose that. Well, she spins killer. Gotta love it. All right, guys. So I got my brake pedal in there. Make sure uh, the hole works. I had to open it up a little bit on the top, but it clears now. I did uh, form that down into that little valley there. So that's nice and tight now. I did form that down into there. So uh, I got a little uh, piece of felt. Whoops. So I got this uh, piece of felt here. It's almost 70 years old and it's still like new. But uh, it was right here on the inside. That's where the old uh, gas pedal rod went through. So I drilled the spot welds off. And uh, here it is. This was on the inside. I'm going to put it on the outside there. On my marks there I made spot weld it in those spot weld holes and then uh, slide this piece of felt down into there like so and then I'll keep a bunch of the weather out so that's good I think I'm gonna cut this back here a little bit and uh, 
when I go to put this all back on, I'll probably put seam sealer on it and then bolt it back down. I did cut my bolts here, left them a little long because I'm going to run lock washers on them. I'll clean them up on the sand or fame, but uh, yeah, make more progress. All right. Radical Mustang. Got my steering column all uh, sanded down. I'm going to squirt some black paint on it. And I got the blinker housing on there. So I made this the bottom. So you won't see these screws. And uh, this went on there. And it didn't have no way to latch because the blinker mechanism's all gone out of it. So I drilled a hole right here. This will be the bottom. This hole will be the bottom where the blinker used to come out. So you won't see that. I tapped that. And I'll put a little uh, a button head Allen bolt in there. So that would be cool. Turbo car. I did paint the firewall. So that looks much better. Matches pretty good. I'll probably uh, touch up all these little pieces here. But uh, I'm going to sand that uh, piece here. And uh, squirt some black paint on the steering column. And I gotta paint that uh, tow board plate. Alright, back at it. 5.0 day, I guess. I'm getting with it. Man, the old 55 is getting dusty. Come on, springtime, I get her out there and blow her off. But, uh, got all my parts painted. I actually did, uh, Weld that felt piece on there where you put the felt for the brake pedal. Got that welded on. Got both sides of this painted uh, satin black. So that's nice. Got my column clamp painted and the plate for it. Got my steering column painted satin black and the blinker housing. And this little guy goes on there. Must have been for the old wiring, but I'll put it back on there to hide that hole. But, uh, yep. So I gotta check out my uh, my seam sealer, see if it's not dried up. Then I'll put a bead of uh, seam sealer around this when I go to put it in the truck. So it's coming together. All right. Well, I got my seam sealer out. Last time I bought it, they only had gray, but this was a year old. I had a good cap on it, and uh, it was thick, but it still worked. So I put a nice bead around there and then uh, bolted that panel down and it oozed out and I spread it around there and bolted it real tight. I think I'm going to tape them uh, bolt heads up and uh, give her another squirt of black paint. This one here, I turned around backwards because this is where I was having trouble with clearance for my uh, valve cover. So I didn't want it to stick out no further. So I'm going to squirt some paint on that. I did get my... Uh, my Borgs and steering knuckles, three quarter double D by three quarter double D. This one's three quarter double D by three quarter 30 spline. So there's two Saginaw steering boxes. This is out of like a 67 Camaro. And you can't count 30 splines on it because it has a flat spot. So when you go to count these splines, there's two of them. This one has about 24 splines, which it's missing about six so that would be a, a 30 spline the other one is a 36 spline and I believe you'll count about 30 um, splines on it because it'll have a flat spot too so there's only two kinds that fit these Saginaw boxes a 30 and a 36 so this one had 24 splines so I knew it was a 30 so that's what I got three quarter double D by 30 look at that you don't see that very often focus made in the USA yeah they're stamped right on there too where it says Borgson on the U-joint USA so these are good and I believe uh, the Spicer ones are pretty good I'm not sure about the Flaming River they're probably good too but uh, by good quality uh, joints these are steel the polished stainless ones like on my 55 I think they're about 50 more bucks for a polished ones. So save some money buying just the steel ones. Um, I don't think they'll rust 
Then you put, put some oil on them on your hand and oil them up with your fingers and then keep them from rusting. But I think I'm gonna use this uh, this steel rod here and I'll paint that black. This one here was a little bit loose. This is from my old International and it's probably a Chinese one so it's a little bit smaller it seems. This steel one here, uh, raw metal, it fits a lot better. So I'll cut that one and use it. So I'm gonna get some paint squirted on that and uh, get the column in here and get the brackets all on there and start measuring for this uh, steering rod. All right guys, I'll be back. All right, well I got my steering column in there. Got the clamp around it, the Tri-5 clamp. Still gotta tighten this up and uh, get someone to help me tighten these two bolts up, but uh, it's an inch away, like when I mocked it up. Got my piece of felt and my, uh, I guess you'd call it a brake pedal felt seal retainer. So that works pretty good. On the inside. Got my column drop in there, don't look too bad. Got the seal in there. Scuffed it up a little bit, assembling it all, but uh, that's all right. I'm gonna put some carpet in here one day or something. There's that piece right there. It's nice and tight down to the old four pan now. I just used a little crescent wrench and folded that real uh, easy and worked it. Same right here. But yeah, so need to put this upper bearing in here and uh, insert that rod, the steering rod, and put that lower bearing in there, and get some Loctite, and uh, put some Loctite on these Allen head set screws here, so that bearing will never slip out. I don't think it ever would. It's uh, It won't go up in, because I had to sand this on the inside to get that bearing to fit, but uh, just to keep her locked in there nice and tight. All right, I'm gonna get that rod in there and get some more done. All right, I got the wheel bolted up in there. I got a nice gap from my blinker housing there. It spins good. You probably always gotta take this off and turn it a notch or so. It never fails. But I got the steering box centered up. The wheels straight. Um, I got the bearing in there you got locked tight on the little set screws on both sides I haven't locked tight at the collar yet but uh, I got the double D joint up here and I got the double or double D joint here with the spline in this way and if you got a spline and a spline you always want to sync these uh, U joints up you don't want them crossed you know you want them facing the same direction lined up with each other you don't want one offset from the other one because it won't run smooth this is the way you do it you line those joints up with a double d shaft it lines it up itself but if i would have spline there and just a regular shaft i guess you would have to line them up but uh so i got an antenna in there one of those magnet antennas you want to make sure they're flat so I got hooking it in there, and you can see it's flush to the inside there as it's flush to my uh, my steering box shaft. You don't want those protruding inside. And up in there, if you can see the double D shaft from the column, it's flush to the inside. So it's a trick way to do it. It's hard to measure this, and you don't want to cut it short. So it's just one of these guys, uh, an antenna magnet but a small one and if you ain't got one go break an antenna off the old junk car out back but uh so now I'm gonna take this out and measure this uh, antenna for the length of my rod but I'll probably cut it a uh, 3 8 long or so I don't want to cut it short I only got one maybe even a half inch long and I'll still be able to get it in here and then I'll flush it up on the inside of this one then back here I'll be able to take my all and make a mark so it's dead flush dead flush look at that antenna it's close to the cross member but uh, it'll clear even the original ones are uh, pretty close to that cross member the collapsible steering rod 
So, I'm gonna measure it up. I'm gonna cut this rod, this double D shaft, and uh, try it in there. I'm gonna cut it long, and then I'll sand it all up and clean it, paint it, when I get the right measurement. But don't want to cut it too short. And get on that, cutting that rod. All right, I got the rod in there. All I did was uh, loosen up my steering box, left one bolt in it, tilted it back, and then I was able to slip the rod in there, tilted it back down, put the bolts back in, snugged them up. I got this upper in here, dead flush to the inside. And you can see right there, I'm about a quarter long. So, I'm going to take my, uh, my awl here, give her a good scratch, then cut it for length, put it back in there, and uh, snug it up and make some marks with a felt pen, and drill this rod for so these uh, set screws set in this rod just about maybe a sixteenth or so, just a nice little uh, divot in the rod. So those set screws can bite, and I'll have to do that. I think I'm gonna do the steering rod too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. All right, guys, get her out and get her cut, get her drilled. All right, I got the steering shaft rod drilled. Nice little uh, divots in there. You always want to make sure you put them in there. Those knuckles will come apart. But uh, I did the steering box shaft. I did the double D that I made on for both set screws there. So look how good that spins. It's so nice. So I'm gonna paint this rod up and uh, get it together. I don't think I'm gonna lock tight these U joints on here because this subframe uh, I want to wire wheel it all down and uh, put some paint on it, make it look a little bit better. But yeah, just about got steering on this old girl. Gotta love that. Getting closer. All right. All right, guys. Oh, hey, check this out. Little mini GMC. <laughs> yeah, I need to paint it to make it look like my truck. I got the same wheels for it. She's pretty sweet, but uh, that's what mine will look like if it was red. But uh, I think we'll paint this one to make it look like mine. Yep, pretty cool, but uh, I got my steering all together. We got steering. So I painted the rod. I actually dropped this on the ground <laughs> after I painted it, but that's all right. So I got that all together. I never Loctite all these yet because uh, I'm gonna take this apart when I go to wire wheel this subframe and paint it up. But got her all together. Got my uh, my blinker switch on there. Hey, look at that! Even got my Pontiac horn button because I got a Pontiac engine in it. That's why. But uh, yeah, I got the steering wheel centered. So I got a uh, one, two, three and a half turns that way. Go back this way. One, two, three, four, five six and a half shit didn't know i could count did you <laughs> so one two three so that's centered up so that's cool i'm waiting to get a find a original water temperature so i can put this dash back together this guys want 100 125 bucks for an original one but i did find a couple stuart warner ones maybe i might put in here that looked really similar to that to those uh gauges there i did put a grommet down in that hole down there i need to put on my uh my new brake pedal pad i'm gonna use some uh kind of adhesive to put it on there so it don't slide off but yeah super cool we got steering now i got the pitman arm unhooked just so i could cycle it but it's been super easy so let's kill her one more uh, piece of the puzzle down. So, 
I'm not sure what we'll do next, but uh, we figure out something. I'm getting closer. There's that little mini GMC. Yeah, she's bad all lower down. <laughs> all right, guys. John Force and Pentagon. We'll uh, catch you next time. Appreciate you guys watching. You guys take care out there.